Hello guys, this is a demonstration of teaching via book and lecture method. Dear friends, you are living in a digital age where information technology is bringing the entire world near to you and making the world one. Yeah, we are the global citizens now. Do you know what are the technologies that help to achieve the IT revolution? Of course, the processing of the information is done by semiconductor devices. But what helped high speed transmission of this information between mobile tower to tower or between countries or between continents? Optical fiber is carrying all this information around the globe with the speed of light. In fiber optic communication, light is the carrier wave and optical fiber is the wave gate for light. The beauty of optical fiber is in its small size, it's having an approximate size of a human hair and still having huge data carrying capacity of the order of terabit per second. What is optical fiber? What is its structure? What material it is made up of? How light is propagating through optical fiber? We will see these details in this lecture. Please watch this lecture with proper attention. Thank you. The topic today, Introduction to Fiber Optics. Myself, Dr. Jinesh Matthew. I'm an assistant professor in Department of Physics, Gidham, Bangalore. Learning Outcomes. At the end of this lecture, the student will be able to describe the structure of optical fiber. Student will be able to explain propagation of light in optical fiber. Student will summarize the advantages of optical fiber, compare numerical aperture and acceptance angle, explain modes in an optical fiber. Student can compare different fiber types. These are the learning outcomes of this lecture. What is optical fiber? Optical fiber is a waveguide for light. It guides light through it. It consists of a thin, low-loss fused silica glass wire with a center core region and a surrounding region or cladding. The index of refraction of the cladding is less than that of core causing rays of light leaving the core to be refracted back into the core. That is called total internal reflection. That is the working phenomena of optical fiber. A light emitting diode, LED or a laser diode can be used as the source for optical fiber system. A photodiode can be a pin photodiode or an avalanche photodiode can be used as a detector in optical fiber system. Advantages of optical fiber are it's having greater bandwidth than copper, low loss, immunity to electromagnetic interference, no electrical hazard and enhanced safety, increased signal security, small size and lightweight, suitable for extreme harsh environment. So compared to this copper wire, copper coaxial cable or copper to, uh, to pair conductor or uh, copper wire, the bandwidth or data carrying capacity of optical fiber is much much higher than this copper. And if you look at the loss of optical fiber, it's 0.2 dB per kilometer for standard optical fiber, single mode fiber. That's very small compared to any other waveguide. 
immunity to electromagnetic interference. What that means? So in the case of a metal, wire, copper or whatever, uh, if you send electrical signal, of course, uh, the charge is flowing, so there will be a magnetic field around that wire. And that magnetic field can easily interfere with the other uh, field. But in the case of optical fiber, light is propagating through the core of the optical fiber. No light is coming out. So it is immune to electromagnetic interference. Light is carrying the information, not current flow. Similarly, no electrical hazard and enhances safety because it's not uh, electron flowing. There is no chance of spark. So electrical hazard is not there in the case of optical fiber. Increased signal security means, so nobody can tap the information passing through the optical fiber because light propagates through the core only. It, uh, around the core there is cladding, both are glass. So if you break fiber, of course the information is lost, it can be identified easily using OTDR. So nobody can tap the information passing through this optical fiber. Uh, but metallic conductor using this field sensor, people can tap the information passing through metallic conductor. So it is having, optical fiber is having increased signal security, small size and light weight. So as I said before, it's having the size of a human hair, thickness, core of optical fiber, standard single mode fiber is having 8 micrometer. And uh, core plus cladding, its size is 125 micrometer. It's very thin. And this optical fiber is suitable for extreme harsh environment. It's made up of fused silica glass. Its melting temperature is greater than 1400 degrees Celsius. That means it can uh, withstand temperatures above 1000 degrees Celsius. So optical fiber is suitable for extreme harsh environment. History of light guiding by total internal reflection. In the year 1870, John Tyndall observed light guiding in a thin water jet. John Tyndall is an Irish physicist. So he, he observed light is propagating through this water jet and reaching the bottom of the uh, basin here. So that phenomena is called total internal reflection. So total internal reflection is first observed by John Tyndall in the year 1870. Who is the father of optical fiber? Narendra Singh Kapani is believed to be the father of optical fiber. In the year 1951, along with the Heel and Hopkins, Kapani used optical fiber bundle for transmission of image. In the year 1958, Kapani creates optical fiber with the cladding. This picture shows Dr. Kapani being awarded by former Prime Minister of India, Adal Bihari Vajpayee. What is fiber structure? You already have small glimpse of what is optical fiber. It's a cylindrical shape, waveguide. Its center region is called the core and the surrounding core, surrounding region cladding and there can be a buffer coating around this cladding because core and cladding made up of glass in order to uh, give mechanical strength, uh, breakage due to scratch, etc. Uh, to avoid this uh, damage, uh, buffer coating, polymer buffer coating is also applied on strands of fiber. So this inner region core will be having a refractive index N1 and surrounding cladding region will be having refractive index N2. And always the core refractive index will be higher than the cladding refractive index N2. If A is the radius, 2A is the diameter of core. Uh, so this, this is the basic structure of an optical fiber. Here you can see uh, light is undergoing total internal reflection. This is a glass rod and laser diode launches light into this glass rod and this light is not refracted away instead it is undergoing total internal reflection and reaches the other end of the glass rod. It's a demonstration of total internal reflection. Regarding fiber structure, we know that core and cladding constitute important parts of optical fiber. Light always propagates along the core of the fiber. 
not through the cladding so whatever light carried by the optical fiber is propagating through the core of the fiber and core is core material is highly pure silica silicon dioxide uh, sometimes it will be doped with uh, some germanium to increase the refractive index of the core compared to the cladding in that case the cladding will be pure fused silica and core is always surrounded by pure silica uh, cladding and why a cladding is required if you have only core and uh, surrounding air means air is having less refract index than glass so totally dead reflection will take place but still uh, we need a cladding because uh, this cladding reduces scattering loss that results from the dielectric discontinuities at the core surface so if there is no uniform cladding there can be dielectric discontinuities due to uh, some dust sitting on the core surface etc so in order to avoid scattering losses uh, this cladding is very important also cladding adds mechanical strength to the fiber it protects the core from absorbing surface contaminants with which it could come in contact Additionally, this cladding protects the core from absorbing surface contaminants. So, absorbing surface, surface con contaminants can absorb light and that will constitute uh, some additional loss. So, cladding protects core from this absorbing surface contaminants. So, if you consider a fiber optic system, either a fiber optic communication system or a fiber optic um, sensor system the main components of a fiber optic system are light source optical fiber and the detection unit light source can be led laser diode etc optical fiber normally standard single mode fiber and detection unit is a photodiode plus some electronics signal processing electronics we'll go for an activity students will form groups of four to six members this will take only 30 seconds and each student group will identify three different applications of optical fiber students are allowed to use the cell phone to find this application of optical fiber student each group will get 2.5 minutes after this 2.5 minutes the instructor will collect all the unique applications of optical fiber from each group and list out them on the board. This activity is an example for active cooperative learning. Uh, student will uh, discuss with the peer groups and uh, they will identify applications of uh, optical fiber and uh, all the applications will be listed out on the board so that everybody will get uh, all the information at the end of the activity students will be getting all the applications of optical fiber total time allowed for this activity is approximately six minutes now come back to the principle of light propagation through optical fiber that is total internal reflection total internal reflection depends on two factors one is angle of incidence and second one is refractive index what is angle of incidence if the light travels from one medium to other medium the angle it makes with the normal to the surface of the interface is called angle of incidence what is refractive index refractive index determines the velocity of light through a medium it's an optical property of uh, material refractive index is defined like this it is the ratio of velocity of light in free space to the velocity of light in that medium and Snell's law between two mediums is defined like this if the light ray travels from a medium of refractive index n1 to a medium of refractive index n2 with an angle of incidence theta 1 then the refracted angle theta 2 is given by this relation 
എൻ വൺ സൈൻ തീറ്റ വൺ ഈക്വൽ ടു എൻ ടു സൈൻ തീറ്റ ടു ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ദി കേസ് ഓഫ് ഒപ്റ്റിക്കൽ ഫൈബർ കോർ ക്ലാഡിങ് കോർ ഈസ് ഹാവിങ് റിഫ്രാക്റ്റീവ് ഇൻഡെക്സ് എൻ വൺ ആൻഡ് ക്ലാഡിങ് റിഫ്രാക്റ്റീവ് ഇൻഡെക്സ് എൻ ടു ഇഫ് ദി ലൈറ്റ് ഇൻ ദി കോർ സ്ട്രൈക്സ് ദി കോർ ക്ലാഡിങ് ഇൻ്റർഫേസ് വിത്ത് ആൻ ആംഗിൾ തീറ്റ വൺ സച്ച് ദാറ്റ് ഇഫ് ദിസ് ആംഗിൾ ഈസ് ലെസ് ദാൻ ദി ക്രിറ്റിക്കൽ ആംഗിൾ ക്രിറ്റിക്കൽ ആംഗിൾ ഈസ് ദി ആംഗിൾ ദാറ്റ് എബോവ് വിച്ച് ടോട്ടൽ ഇൻറ്റേണൽ റിഫ്ലക്ഷൻ വിൽ ഹാപ്പൻസ് സോ ദിസ് ആംഗ് റേ വിൽ അണ്ടർ ഗോ റിഫ്രാക്ഷൻ ഹിയർ ആൻഡ് ദിസ് റിഫ്രാക്ഷൻ ഈസ് ഡിഫൈൻഡ് ബൈ ദിസ് നെൽസ് ലോ ഹിയർ സിൻസ് എൻ ടു ഈസ് ലെസ് ദാൻ എൻ വൺ എൻ ടു ലെസ് ദാൻ എൻ വൺ മീൻസ് തീറ്റ ടു വിൽ ബി ഗ്രേറ്റർ ദാൻ തീറ്റ വൺ സോ ദി ലൈറ്റ് റിഫ്രാക്ട്സ് ലൈറ്റ് റിഫ്രാക്റ്റഡ് റേ വിൽ ബി ഡിവിയേറ്റിംഗ് ഫ്രം ദി ഡിവേറ്റിംഗ് മോർ ഫ്രം ദി നോർമൽ ടു ദിസ് ഇൻറ്റർഫേസ് ഹിയർ So, if the angle of incidence is increased to the critical angle, means the angle of refraction is 90. Angle of refraction 90 means if you substitute 90 here, sin 90 is 1. So, that angle, sin, uh, angle of incidence is called a critical angle. So, sin theta c equal to n, n2 divided by n1. So, an angle... of incidence is called critical angle when angle of refraction is equal to 90 degree in that case that critical angle for two medium is given by this formula sin theta c equal to n2 by n1 for any two medium interface the critical angle for is sin theta c equal to n2 by n1 n2 is rarer medium and n1 is denser medium if the ins angle of incidence is greater than that critical angle then what will happen this ray will undergo total internal reflection it will completely come back to the same medium those light striking on the core cladding interface from core will comes back to the core itself it will not um, refracted to cladding so total internal reflection happens if the angle of incidence at core cladding interface is greater than or equal to critical angle total internal reflection will happen so that is called total internal reflection this will happen when this angle of incidence is greater than critical angle and also uh, light travels from denser medium to rarer medium this is a demonstration of total internal reflection here you can see when the angle of incidence is less than 40 degree the light was refracting now if the angle of incidence is above 40 degree the light will undergo total internal reflection so the critical angle for this medium interface here is 40 degree you can see that total internal reflection is the complete reflection of a ray of light within a medium from the surrounding surfaces back into the medium the condition for total internal reflection are light should travel from denser to rarer medium and the angle of incidence of the light should be greater than the critical angle for that to medium interface what is critical angle it is the angle of incidence above which all the rays undergo total internal reflection in other words critical angle is the minimum angle of incidence that supports total internal reflection the equation for critical angle is sin theta c or sin phi c equal to n2 by n1 light propagation in an ideal step index fiber by total internal reflection now we will see some theory we will see the light propagation theory and we will uh, derive the equation for numerical aperture the light gathering capacity of optical fiber consider an optical fiber with the core of refractive index n1 and 
a surrounding cladding of refractive index n2 if light is launched from air to the core of the optical fiber this light will undergo refraction here obeying snell's law and uh, at this core cladding interface also uh, it will undergo refraction or total inherent refraction obeying snell's law if the fiber is placed in a medium of refractive index n a equal to 1 that is air such that n1 is greater than n2 and n2 is greater than n a alpha is the angle of incidence at the flat end of the fiber theta the corresponding angle of refraction at this interface here and phi the angle of incidence at the core cladding interface here this interface the proper the propagation of rays by total Indian and reflection requires phi to be greater than phi c phi c is the critical angle angle corresponding to angle of incidence at which the angle of refraction is 90 degrees critical angle phi c in order to undergo total reflection all the rays coming here should be having an angle of incidence greater than or equal to phi c that phi c angle corresponds to a maximum angle of theta m here that theta m corresponds to a man maximum angle of incidence alpha m here that is alpha to be less than certain critical angle alpha m so alpha m is called the acceptance angle that's the maximum angle to which a light launched here that can undergo total Indian refraction so oh, if you launch light with an angle less than alpha m that will undergo that will be having a critical angle of incidence greater than the phi c here and that will undergo total internal reflection and that light will be propagating through the fiber without any loss and it will reach the other end of the fiber this theta m if you look at this figure here so here you can consider here you can consider a right angled triangle like this so for this right angled triangle this angle is 90 degree if you consider a right angled triangle corresponding to phi c and theta m you will get uh, this angle is 90 that means you will get a relation theta m equal to uh, 90 minus phi c because total angle is 180 this is 90 that means this plus this equal to uh, the, uh, the phi c plus phi, theta m equal to 90 that means theta m equal to 90 minus phi c now uh, from Snell's law we will get the equation for uh, uh, critical angle phi c so here the refractive index is n1 and cladding refractive index is n2 so sin phi c equal to n2 by n1 uh, because you know that sin phi uh, n1 n1 uh, phi sin phi c equal to n2 sin 90 that is sin phi c equal to n2 by n1 now maximum entrance angle alpha m is found from snell's relation written into the fiber end phase if you apply snell's law here n a or 1 sin alpha m equal to n1 sin theta m sin theta m theta m is 90 minus phi c sin 90 minus phi c is cos phi c so you will get n a sin alpha m equal to n1 cos phi c cos phi c equal to cos square theta equal to cos square phi c equal to cos square theta is equal to 1 minus sin square theta so you will get cos phi c is equal to square root of 1 minus sin square phi c sin sin phi c equal to n2 by n1 so sin square phi c is equal to n2 by n1 whole square so you will get 1 minus n, n2 square divided by n1 square all raised to 1 by 2 means square root of equal to if you take lcm you will get n1 square minus n2 square all raised to 1 by 2 divided by n1 that is cos phi c equal to this value you will get if you substitute that here 
n1 and n1 get cancels you will get n a sin alpha m equal to square root of n1 square minus n2 square so this if it is medium is air then sin alpha m alpha m is the maximum entrance angle called acceptance angle sine of acceptance angle is called the numerical aperture it determines the light gathering capacity of optical fiber and is equal to square root of n1 square minus n2 square acceptance angle maximum entrance angle that supports total internal reflection that is alpha m is called the angle of acceptance of the fiber alpha m equal to sin inverse of square root of n1 square minus n2 square you got sin alpha m equal to square root of n1 square minus n2 square that means alpha m equal to sin inverse of square root of n1 n1 square minus n2 square that is all the rays incident within a cone of half angle alpha m will be collected and propagated by the fiber so alpha m corresponds to critical angle uh, phi c at the core cladding interface so all the rays incident within a cone of half angle alpha m will be collected and propagated through the fiber why half angle because uh, optical fiber is cylindrical shape you can uh, rotate that maximum entrance angle to 360 that means you will get a cone of half angle alpha m so light comes within this uh, with an angle within this cone of acceptance will undergo total linear reflection and propagated through the optical fiber the range of incident angle which can be used for total internal reflection is called a cone of acceptance what is numerical aperture sine of angle of acceptance is called a numerical aperture of the fiber what is numerical aperture sine of angle of acceptance is called a numerical aperture of the fiber provided that medium surrounding the fiber is air and its refract index is 1 that is numerical aperture is equal to sin alpha m is equal to square root of n1 square minus n2 square where n1 is the refract index of core and n2 is the refract index of fiber cladding numerical aperture determines the light gathering capacity of the fiber so how much light can be gathered and propagated through the optical fiber is determined by numerical aperture value of that fiber and numerical aperture value depends on the core and cladding refractive index relative refractive index difference delta is defined as n1 square minus n2 square divided by 2 n1 square in terms of this relative refractive index delta numerical aperture is given as n a equal to n1 into square root of 2 delta numerical aperture or light gathering capacity of the optical fiber is equal to core refractive index into square root of 2 delta delta is the relative refractive index difference between core and cladding so this equation tells that increasing the relative refractive index difference of core and cladding increases the numerical aperture of the fiber or light gathering capacity of the fiber now we will see different modes of light propagation through optical fiber mode what is mean by mode mode means it's a it's say it's a way of propagation of light one mode of propagation of light means one way of propagation of light through optical fiber there can be multi mode fiber single mode fiber etc multi mode fiber means multiple ray paths will be there different ways of propagation of light will be there in the core that is multi mode fiber single mode fiber means only one mode of propagation one way of propagation of light through the core of the optical fiber low and high order ray paths in a multi mode fiber but in the case of single mode fiber only axial ray is present axial ray that means ray parallel to the axis of the optical fiber is allowed in the case of single mode fiber only one way of propagation Ax axial ray 
only will be there in the case of single mode fiber but in the case of multi mode fiber there can be low and higher order ray paths like multiple ray paths can be there axial ray can be there um, rays with different angles or multiple paths will be there in the case of multi mode fiber so the definition of fiber mode is something like this fiber modes are defined as different paths of light through the optical fiber qualitatively these modes can be thought of as different propagation angles uh, every mode is represented by a unique solution of the maxwell's equation inside the core so the light, uh, light is an electromagnetic wave it's propagation through optical fiber is defined by maxwell's equations and from maxwell's equation you will get wave equation and if you apply boundary conditions and solve uh, for dielectric wave dielectric cylindrical wave guide you will get different solutions of this wave equation uh, one of such solution is called a mode if only one solution it's single mode fiber if multiple solutions are there for that cylindrical wave guide dielectric wave guide that is optical fiber then it's a multi mode fiber so mode is a solution to wave equation for that particular wave guide optical fiber or qualitatively these modes can be thought of as different propagation angles or it can be defined as different paths of the light through the optical fiber cable another definition of mode is it is the stable field distribution along the x axis with only a periodic set, set dependency is known as mode so a fiber mode tells you the transverse field distribution if the light propagates in z direction x is the transverse direction so uh, fiber mode will tell you the transverse uh, that is um, the uh, field electric field or magnetic field distribution transverse to this z direction is given by fiber mode here you can see the maxwell's equation here you can see the maxwell's equations four equations del cross h del cross del cross e del cross h del dot d del dot b magnetic field electric field magnetic flux density electric flux density all uh, these four equations are given by james clark maxwell called maxwell's equations um, they are uh, obtained from gauss law uh, ampere's law and faraday's law etc but maxwell corrected some error in those equations and uh, he unified these four equations like this Maxwell's equations are used to derive wave equation describing the propagation of electromagnetic wave in any medium. So here you will get from this Maxwell's equation uh, if you apply the properties of the medium you will get wave equation like this. If you solve this wave equation applying the boundary condition for the particular wave guide you will get different solutions one or more solutions. These solutions of this wave equations are called modes. Here you can see it's James Clerk Maxwell's house in 14 India Street, Edinburgh, UK. I'm happy to say that I got an opportunity to visit this place. Now, uh, as I said before, fiber modes will give you how the field, electric field or magnetic field is distributed along the X direction or uh, transverse to the light propagation so the fundamental mode is lp01 so it's maximum intensity at the center and intensity decreases like in a gaussian way uh, this is the intensity profile of lp11 one higher order mode and this is the intensity profile of lp21 another higher order mode in optical fiber so it will this mode will give you the transverse field distribution or transverse uh, power distribution in optical fiber 
so here you can see the fundamental mode how the field intensity varies this is the axis of the fiber from axis it decreases if it goes to the cladding so core how the field is maximum at the center and decreases so transverse field distribution is described by fiber mode now we will go for an activity so we have seen the equation for numerical aperture what is the equation for numerical aperture what is numerical aperture numerical aperture is the light gathering capacity of optical fiber it is the sign of angle of acceptance and numerical aperture is equal to square root of n1 square minus n2 square n1 is the refract index of fiber core and n2 is the refract index of fiber cladding please read this question and solve it and find the numerical aperture of the given optical fiber an optical fiber has a core material of refract index 1.55 and a cladding material of refractive index 1.50. The light is launched into it from air. Calculate its numerical aperture and acceptance angle. So you will get 4 minutes to complete this problem. So numerical aperture is equal to square root of n1 square minus n2 square. n1 is equal to 1.5. Uh, sorry, n1 is equal to 1.55 and n2 is equal to 1.5. After finding numerical aperture, Acceptance angle is sine inverse of numerical aperture will give you the acceptance angle. Now we will see classification of optical fibers. Optical fibers can be classified based on modes of propagation. It can be single mode fiber, multi mode fiber. And we can classify optical fiber based on its refractive index profile. Based on refractive index profile, it is classified as step index fiber or grade index fiber. Based on wave guiding, we can classify optical fiber as index guiding or band gap guiding. So standard fiber is index guiding fiber, but new uh, newly developed uh, microstructured optical fibers are photonic crystal fiber. Pan cap guiding is there. How the light is guided? Either it is through uh, index guiding, total internal reflection, or pan cap guiding. Depending on that, you can classify optical fiber into index guiding or pan cap guiding fibers. Based on structure, can be microstructured optical fiber, solid core fiber hollow core fiber based on the structure of optical fiber optical fibers are classified into solid core hollow core fiber etc so there can be microstructured optical fiber uh, with the holy fibers with the holes in core and cladding etc classification of optical fiber based on material that will that we will come later single mode fiber single mode fiber will be having one mode of propagation one way of propagation the light propagates through this fiber along the axis parallel to the axis of the core core will be very small and core diameter will be of the order of 8.12 micrometer and cladding diameter is 125 micrometer and single mode fiber if it is step index of course the core refractive index refractive index will be higher than the cladding refractive index n2 n1 magnitude will be higher than n2 magnitude cladding refractive index n2 will be smaller compared to core refractive index n1 single mode fiber permits only fundamental mode of the light core diameter of single mode fiber will be smaller compared to multi mode fiber numerical aperture is also small for uh, single mode fiber because normally the relative refractive index difference uh, will be small for um, achieving this single mode propagation or weakly guiding up to achieve weakly guiding approximation the relative refractive index difference will be small that means numerical aperture will be small for single mode fiber since the numerical aperture is small the its acceptance angle also will be very small acceptance angle small means it is very difficult to couple light into single mode fiber so that's about single mode fiber. Now we'll see 
the details of standard single mode optical fiber most common single mode optical fiber is smf28 manufactured by koning and its core diameter is 8.2 micrometer outer cladding diameter is 125 micrometer step index profile it's having a refract index profile step index and numerical aperture is 0.14 numerical aperture of standard single mode fiber sm of 28 is 0.14 and uh, numerical aperture is sign of acceptance angle so acceptance angle is equal to if you take a sign inverse of this you will get 8 degree so light launched from air with an angle less than or equal to 8 degree will undergo total internal reflection otherwise it will not undergo total internal reflection. so light coupling is very difficult and cutoff wavelength for single mode fiber is uh, 12 16 nanometer and fiber will be single mode above this wavelength single mode for both 1300 and 1550 nanometer standard telecommunication wavelengths so sm of 28 uh, cut off wavelength is 1260 nanometer so this window 1550 nanometer window and 1300 nanometer window uh, this fiber will be single mode if the wavelength is less than this this means this fiber will be multi mode sm of 28 is used for communication telecommunication long distance communication applications now we'll see the details of multi mode step index fiber Multi-mode means multiple ray paths, mul different angle of incidence will be there. Core radius is approximately 50 or 62.5 micrometer. Cladding diameter is 125 micrometer. Multiple ray paths will be there. Numerical aperture is high. Dispersion decreates the signal. So dispersion is a, a disadvantage of multi-mode fiber. Because different ray paths, light rays will reach the other end at different times. So if you send a pulse, that pulse broadening or dispersion will happen in the case of multi-mode fiber. Now we will see the multi-mode grade index fiber. Multi-mode grade index fiber means the refractive index profile of this core gradually varies from axis. You see refractive index profile is not step index like a step change uh, here refractive index varies gradually so maximum refractive index is at the axis of the core if you go away from the axis of the core refractive index gradually decreases and at the cladding it's the refractive index of cladding cladding refractive index is n2 and after cladding refractive index increases gradually and maximum is at axis of the fiber so graded index fiber its typical core diameter is 50 or 62.5 micrometer and cladding diameter is 125 micrometer and refractive index profile of graded index fiber is given as n of r r is the uh, red uh, distance from the axis of the fiber core n of r is equal to n1 into square root of 1 minus 2 delta into r by a all raised to alpha when r less than a that is inside the core refractive index varies like this if r equal r greater than a means uh, a is the core radius r greater than a means cladding that means cladding refractive index is constant n2 core refractive index varies with respect to r here alpha is a grading index profile parameter and it value uh, depends on uh, parabolic or triangular profile uh, depending upon the profile uh, its value can be 1 2 etc ray propagation in graded index fiber here uh, this graded index fiber will save the dispersion multimodal dispersion because different ray paths uh, if the refractive index less means light will travel faster if the refractive index high means light will travel slower so the higher order modes that is ha modes having higher 
uh, angles here compared to the axis those will penetrate more into this core outer area that it is having a path a longer path but this outside region it travels fast so if the axial ray propagates with one speed refraction index will be high for axial ray same with that same speed the all the light rays with the different angle will travel with the same speed different modes of light propagates with the same velocity or same speed and reaches at the same time at the other end of the fiber in the case of graded index fiber that's the advantage of graded index fiber but of course its manufacturing is very difficult and cost is high compared to step index fiber but dispersion can be reduced using graded index fiber dispersion means broadening of pulse light rays with the different angle will reach other end with the different time means the pulse will broaden pulse width will determine the data rate if pulse broadens means data rate will decrease so that will affect the communication bandwidth of the optical fiber so graded index fiber will overcome this dispersion effect because it gives almost same velocity or same time for all the propagating modes in the fiber so if you compare the single mode multi mode step index and multi mode graded index fiber single mode fiber step index so core clad core cladding one refract core cladding ha having one refractive index and core having another refractive index core will be very small diameter of the core will be very small multi mode step index fiber cladding will be having one refractive index core will be having another constant refractive index core refractive index is higher now for graded index multi mode fiber cladding will be having one constant refractive index core refractive index gradually varies and maximum at the axis of the fiber core here multi mode step index fiber multiple ray paths travel with the different speed and reaches the other end at different time multi mode graded index fiber different modes travel with the same speed and reaches the other end at the same time single mode fiber only one mode axial ray only present that mode propagates modal dispersion is obviously absent in the case of single mode fiber a comparison of fiber types single mode fiber multi mode fiber graded index fiber and features core diameter single mode fiber 8.5 or 8.2 to 8.5 micrometer multi mode fiber 50 or 62 graded index fiber 50 or 62 micrometer relative refractive index difference between core and cladding delta n very small in the case of single mode fiber multi mode fiber it will be large graded index fiber we can't say because core refractive index is gradually varying numerical aperture for single mode fiber numerical aperture is very small multi mode fiber it will be larger and uh, graded index fiber smaller than that of multi mode fiber but greater than that of single mode fiber number of modes single mode fiber of course only one mode will be there multi mode fiber many modes graded index fiber many modes more than one mode attenuation least in the case of single mode fiber high for multi mode fiber lower than multi mode fiber for graded index fiber dispersion zero intermodal dispersion for single mode fiber modal dispersion will be absent large modal dispersion will be there for multi mode fiber and intermodal dispersion is zero but there can be material dispersion the material dispersion is because of different wavelengths light of different wavelength propagating means different wavelength get dispersed will be having different velocity so material dispersion can be there but modal dispersion is absent in the case of graded index fiber bandwidth single mode fiber bandwidth is very high compared to other two greater than 3 gigahertz per kilometer multi mode fiber greater than 200 megahertz kilometer graded index fiber 200 megahertz kilometer to 3 gigahertz kilometer 
അഡ്വാൻറ്റേജ് ഓഫ് സിംഗിൾ മോഡ് ഫൈബർ നോ ഡിഗ്രഡേഷൻ ഓഫ് സിഗ്നൽ ഹൈ ഡാറ്റ റേറ്റ് പോസിബിൾ ഹൈലി സ്യൂട്ടബിൾ ഫോർ കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ മൾട്ടിമോഡ് ഫൈബർ ലെസ് എക്സ്പെൻസീവ് എൽ ഇ ഡി ഹൈ ന്യൂമറിക്കൽ പർച്ചസ് സോ ഈവൻ എൽ ഇ ഡി ഓർ ലെസ് സോസ് ക്യാൻ ബി യൂസ്ഡ് ഫോർ ലോഞ്ചിങ് ലൈറ്റ് കപ്ലിംഗ് ഓഫ് ലൈറ്റ് ഫ്രം ഫൈബർ ടു ഫൈബർ ഈസ് ഈസി എൽ ഇ ഡി ഓർ ലേസർ ലൈറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ബി യൂസ്ഡ് ഡിസഡ്വാൻറ്റേജ് സിംഗിൾ മോഡ് ഫൈബർ റിക്വേഴ്സ് ലേസർ സോസ് ബിക്കോസ് ലൈറ്റ് ഗ്യാദറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ഈസ് വെരി സ്മോൾ വി നീഡ് ഫോക്കസ്ഡ് ലേസർ ലൈറ്റ് കപ്ലിംഗ് ഈസ് ഡിഫിക്കൽട്ട് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ സിംഗിൾ മോഡ് ഫൈബേഴ്സ് ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് കോർ ഡയമെട്രി സോർസ് ഓ വെരി സ്മോൾ ലോഞ്ചിങ് ഓഫ് ലൈറ്റ് ഇൻ ടു ഫൈബർ ഈസ് ഡിഫിക്കൽട്ട് ഡിസഡ്വാൻറ്റേജ് ഓഫ് മൾട്ടിമോഡ് ഫൈബർ ഈസ് ഡിഗ്രേഡ് സിഗ്നൽ ലെസ് സ്യൂട്ടബിൾ ഫോർ കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ ബിക്കോസ് ഡിസ്പേഷൻ ഈസ് ദർ ഡിസഡ്വാൻറ്റേജ് ഓഫ് ഗ്രേഡ് ഇൻഡെക്സ് ഫൈബർ ഈസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഫാബ്രിക്കേഷൻ ഈസ് ഡിഫിക്കൽട്ട് അപ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് സോ ലോങ് ഡിസ്റ്റൻസ് കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ അണ്ടർ വാട്ടർ കേബിൾസ് എക്സെട്രാ ഷോർട്ട് ഡിസ്റ്റൻസ് കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ യു ക്യാൻ യൂസ് മൾട്ടിമോഡ് ഫൈബർ ഡാറ്റ ലിങ്ക്സ് ആൻഡ് ടെലിഫോൺ ലൈൻസ് യു ക്യാൻ യൂസ് ഗ്രേറ്റ് ഇൻഡെക്സ് ഫൈബർ നൗ വിൽ സി ദി ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഫൈബേഴ്സ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ മെറ്റീരിയൽ ദാറ്റ് വി സ്കിപ്ഡ് ഏർലിയർ സോ ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ മെറ്റീരിയൽ ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ മെറ്റീരിയൽ യൂസ്ഡ് വി ക്യാൻ ക്ലാസിഫൈ ഒപ്റ്റിക്കൽ ഫൈബേഴ്സ് ആസ് സിലിക്ക കോർ സിലിക്ക ക്ലാരിങ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ക്ലാരിങ് ആൻഡ് കോർ ആർ മെയ്ഡ് അപ്പ് ഓഫ് യൂസ്ഡ് സിലിക്ക So, standard telecommunication fiber used for uh, internet, undersea cables, sensing applications, etc. Plastic core, plastic cladding. It is a plastic fiber. Core and cladding are plastic. Flexible short distance communication, FTTH, etc. Biomedical and sensing applications, they can be used. Silica core, but plastic cladding. They are used for sensing applications. Sapphire fiber. So, it is not uh, silica fiber. glass it is sapphire glass so its melting temperature is above 2000 degrees celsius for high temperature applications greater than 1000 degrees celsius you can use sapphire fiber a rare earth element doped fiber for making fiber laces for sensing application and for light amplification in the case of optical communication etc you we use rare earth element doped fiber so far we have seen what is an optical fiber advantages of fiber fiber structure block diagram of a fiber optic system fiber optic system consists of light source optical fiber and light detector light propagation in optical fiber we have seen the theory of light propagation in optical fiber total internal reflection critical angle numerical aperture acceptance angle etc and also we have seen fiber modes different way of propagation of light through optical fiber and also we have seen classification of fiber we have seen different fiber types based on number of modes refractive index profile or based on uh, structure based on material we have seen different fiber types now it's a uh, feedback session so i'm going to test how attentive you guys are so there will be a kahoot quiz it's a game so 10 questions will be there based on this lecture you have to attend this game duration of this game is 6 minutes and finally we will see the winners here i'm going to demonstrate a kahoot quiz i have already made a quiz based on this lecture now go for play here you can uh, assign this game to individual students or you can live stream this game if you go for live live streaming you can choose different option i will go for classic mode now the game is getting ready and uh, it will ask for game pin student can join this game by typing in this game pin or scanning this qr code a kahoot quiz game looks like this if you join the game questions will be coming like this the student can answer the options
so questions all the 10 questions will come one by one the student um, clicks wrong answer to show lost here scoreboard is visible correct answer also will be visible here So based on the answers, the scoreboard will change. So eighth question, relation between numerical aperture and acceptance angle is correct answer is equal to n equal to sin theta a. Ninth question, which fiber is preferred for long distance communication? Answer is single mode fiber. So this can be demonstrated live and students can participate and the instructor can uh, project the uh, screen, scoreboard, etc. during online teaching or inside the class also. The last question is the numerical aperture of an optical fiber is this is the light gathering capacity of fiber. So correct answer it shows like this wrong answers it will show like this and at the end uh, it will sh show the scoreboard at the end the scoreboard can be visible Thank you guys for attending this lecture. See you another day with another topic. Bye bye.